does Paul really mean that women should always be silent in church? We're going to read about that in a little bit more today in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Hey, welcome to Branch Together. This is the channel that takes you through the New Testament, one chapter a day. We wanna be your guides and help you see the New Testament with understanding. And in that, we want you to hear from Jesus as we read together. Today is a crazy day. This chapter, um, <laughs> this chapter has some language that has caused a lot of division and a lot of heartache uh, amongst churches. So I'm going to uh, walk you through it and I'm gonna explain to you kind of some common interpretations of it. And, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, let's pray and then we're gonna read. God, we are humbled by you. We come before you today and we just ask you to be with us as we read, that you are, are present with each of us as we're connected around the globe through this, this medium, Lord. God, we pray that you speak to us, that you uh, show us your heart in the midst of uh, what might be complicated theological questions. We want to see you. We want to know you. We want to grow in you and be shaped and formed and challenged into the people we need to be. Thank you for your word and thank you for the ability to read it freely. In your name we pray. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, a testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed a herald, an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. And a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. Also, women are to dress themselves in modest clothing and decency and good sense, not with elaborate hairstyles, gold, pearls, or expensive apparel, but with good works, as is proper for women who profess to worship God. A woman is to learn quietly with full submission. I do not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. Instead, she is to remain quiet for Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and transgressed. But she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with good sense. All right, this chapter starts with Paul telling Timothy that they have to get together and pray for their leaders, to pray for peace in the land. This, this peace creates an environment that is conducive for the continuing of the spread of the gospel. That's what Paul says. This is good, and it pleases God. Why? Why does it please God? Well, he says, because God wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is directly applicable to us today. Currently, both the speakers on this channel, Jared and I, uh, we're from the United States. And, and here in the U.S., we enjoy the privilege of living out our Christian faith and sharing it with others. So we should pray for our government and we should pray for its leaders that, that peace in this land only increases and doesn't diminish. That can create an environment for us that it's good for us to live out our faith and to share the good news of Jesus with others. That's honestly my main takeaway from this chapter. That's the thing I want to implement in my life is 
to remember to pray for my leaders. But today we do have something that is um, uh, a bit of a theological issue we need to discuss. The second half of this chapter, there's a discussion on men and women. We're going to go into that briefly. But but first, before we go there, I, I want us to remember that this book is a fight against a group of false teachers. We don't know exactly what these false teachers were teaching, but we see Paul's response. At a very minimum, some of this book is clearly specific for that time and place and may not be directly applicable to every time and place. For instance, in in chapter 5, Paul tells Timothy that no widow younger than 60 should be part of their program to help widows. So today, if we set up a widow support system uh, within our churches, do you think we should be required to use an age of 60 as some type of threshold for helping them? No, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, we are going to use wisdom that we have and make a system that is, is best in our space and our time. We have to understand that at a minimum, this and maybe some other things in this chapter are Paul saying specific things for this situation where he's combating these false teachings. It's our job as a church to discern what this letter means for us today and uh, what things are universally applicable. There's a couple of sentences here that have been a, a real source of division in the church. Let me read them. Uh, Paul says, I do not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. Instead, she is to remain quiet. And then in the next verse, he says, For Adam was formed first, and then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and transgressed. All right. There's three ways that this gets interpreted. Well, there's all sorts of variants, but these are pretty much the three big bins. Number one, you have this idea that Paul's saying that women should never teach or lead. They should be quiet. And, and in fact, the comments that he makes about Adam and Eve are actually pointing out that this is the way God has established things from the beginning, a male hierarchy. And this plays out in church that women should always remain silent. I'm not personally sympathetic to this view because uh, it seems that Paul actually encourages women to speak and even prophesy in church in some of his other letters. Okay, the second big bin. Some churches believe that statements about remaining quiet were culturally specific, uh, likely because women were not educated as they are today. And when educated, women are welcome to teach and lead in many contexts. But overall, many of these churches still see a requirement for male leadership in the church due to the statements about Adam and Eve and some cross-references in, uh, in other books. Many good churches fall into this category, and we would call them complementarian, meaning men and women have different but complementary roles in the church. And lastly, there are churches that recognize the occasional nature of this letter, meaning it was written for a specific occasion, in this case, combating some specific false teaching. And they think that this section only applies to the women in Ephesus, where, uh, where Timothy was leading, because they had adopted the false teaching that these false teachers were spreading. These churches usually think about the comments uh, the, about Adam and Eve, uh, the second verse I read. They usually look at that as just a comparison about how women have been deceived by the false teachers, just as the first woman, Eve, was deceived. These churches are called egalitarian, and there's many wonderful churches that are egalitarian. They welcome men and women in all of the same exact roles in church as equals. So where do I stand? Well, honestly, that doesn't really matter much for us today. One of these days, uh, we'll probably put out a video on women in leadership, but not for the purpose of fighting or uh, drawing division amongst churches, but 
rather for the purpose of clarifying our doctrine as a local church. I am a pastor in a local church, and that's my job to clarify doctrine for my church. But whatever of these views you take, I hope that we can join arms and work together for God's kingdom. All right, so Jared's going to be with you for the next couple days, uh, continuing the reading in 1 Timothy. Our memory verse each day is still Thessalonians. You'll see it up on the screen in a minute. Uh, and our next Bible verse will be coming when we get to 2 Timothy. All right, that's all. Love you guys, and we will see you tomorrow.